It's always sunny in Philadelphia. It's a show that has managed to stand the test of time since its very first episode almost two decades ago. Oh, hey, man, we're closed. Yeah, I know. Whoa, 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 we don't want any trouble. What? Guys, this is Terrell from my acting class. It was an episode that was shot in its entirety with next to no money. It was rumored that it cost only $200 to create the pilot episode, but Charlie Day later recanted the validity of that number. He said in an interview, We were a bunch of kids with cameras running around shooting each other, and the next thing you know, we are 11 years in and we're still doing the show. Who could have predicted that? Definitely not Mac. Email? Mark my words, nobody will ever use email. Mobile phones. Fads for yuppies. Mark my words, Charlie. Those things will never catch on. Charlie, in 20 years, everybody's gonna have a beeper. Mark my words. Yeah, yeah. Also, you keep saying that, and I don't know if you're like fully expecting me to like mark these words down, because I don't have like a pen on. It's a simple reason why this show has been able to last so much longer than its other sitcom counterparts. And that is, it's not lame. Man's got, you guys are remembering an episode of Seinfeld. Oh my god. Oh, that's it. Oh. That's, what it that's what it is. Yes. Yeah. Memories are tricky, yeah. It is one of the only shows around that is anchored by 100% creativity and dedication to creating one of the funniest television shows around. That little baby boy was me, I once was a boy, but now I am a man. This is accomplished by the show's willingness to change and adapt. Yeah, we really didn't change that much. No, no, you haven't even changed clothes. And to be the opposite of what a sitcom is, while well, somehow managing to still classify themselves as a sitcom. Dude, please give me a chip. No, I'm gonna get a chip, okay? Come on. Leave it alone with the chips. If you want a chip, you could have gotten a bag at the hamburger store. No, you're not getting the chips. The chips are off the table, okay? I you want a chip. Don't bring give up me the a chip. chip. He wants chips, and I asked him in the store, Dennis, you were there. I said, John, do you want a bag of chips? He said, no, I don't want a chip. You're not getting this. If you wanted a goddamn chip, you should have gotten a goddamn chip at the hamburger shop. Oh, I miss you, Fat Mac. Anyways. One approach that I feel is a small part of their longevity is their ability to not tell the obvious joke and to subvert expectations. We all know what tropes are. We see them every day in the shows and movies we watch. But guess what? The dedicated team behind It's Always Sunny knows them too. And they will be damned before the viewers of their show have any inclination of where a particular bit or joke is going. Okay, I guess you want me to prove to you that this show is really that different from any other sitcom. Well, challenge accepted. Let's take a look at a couple clips from the 1980 sitcom Cheers when they are presented with a, a specific plot device. Damien, look, I've got a simple solution to this whole problem. You see, you just go up to the guys and politely ask them to leave. I mean, that, right, everything is back to normal. Right, 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 yeah. Yeah. You let this bar go gay, you are going to have to hire male waitresses right that means that i'm out on the street and i'm not going to be able to feed little sammy tortelli <laughs> i'm here well we just get rid of your friends diane yeah it was all normies i did a man to there you go <laughs> norman I, I think there's something you should know about those guys yeah. they're not gay as you can see when they're presented with the trope they run with it in this instance, I am of course referring to the trope of gay panic, a true staple in 80s and 90s television. In fact, why don't we move to the 90s and take a look at the show Friends, which I've probably watched in its entirety about 15 times. Now let's see how they handle a similarly presented situation. That is all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right, well, uh, I better go. Yeah, I think that would be best. Yeah. All right, I'll talk to you later. Okay, but not about this. No, never. <laughs> never. So, uh, uh, bye. No touch, no, no touch. <laughs> As you can see, this homophobic gay panic is a true sitcom staple and trope as I've established by showing his presence throughout different iconic television shows, which is what creates a trope in the first place. 
Now, let's take a look at how It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia handles itself when presented with the possibility of conforming to the same boring joke and trope that we have all become accustomed to in other scripted comedy shows. <laughs> Yeah, baby! This hunt is gonna be so awesome, yeah, dude. Yeah, bro, this is what it must feel like before you go into battle. Oh my god, I know, man. I'm so excited. Feel my nips. Holy smokes! They're like super hard, right? Woo! You can cut glass with these bad I know, boys. right? What the hell are you doing? I'm feeling this nips, Frank. Yeah, man, I'm so excited for this hunt that my nips are doing stuff they've never done before. Feel them! You see, either one of those characters could have freaked out in a blatantly homophobic way. Either Mac, who was requested by Dennis to feel his nipples, or Dennis, who was getting his nipples felt for a prolonged and sustained period of time, or Frank, the third party that walked in on them. They could have very easily treated this scene like this. <laughs> and just to be clear, this isn't me praising the show for being woke. There are plenty of problematic moments throughout its 15 year run, what I do appreciate is their writing philosophy to subvert expectations and continuously shock audiences with outlandish punchlines that we have not become accustomed to from shows like Cheers and Friends. This is, I think, a huge proponent for their longevity and ability to stay relevant and entertaining. But if you still don't believe me, here is a clip from the Always Sunny podcast where Glenn Howerton, Charlie Day, Rob McElhiney, and Caitlin Olsen discuss this specific scene and their approach to writing it. We're all, but I, I think we're also identifying what, um, <laughs> what I appreciate most about when we're approaching a scene or even just a comedic beat that we're not always just going for the most profane or like offensive. It's the most unexpected. And I love the idea of... Frank walking in asking us what we're doing and instead of pretending like, oh, yes. we weren't just yes. getting busted, right. you lean all the way into it yeah, and yeah, explain yeah, yeah, to him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Very... Uh, feeling his nipples. Yeah, yeah, feeling his nipples. It's the yeah, just that's just the unexpected joke. The, yeah. the joke that is nor that would normally happen is we'd be like, nothing. We nothing, weren't doing nothing's anything. Happening nothing. Here. Or that... Or that Dennis would want him to stop at a certain point. He's just right. really he's yeah. very proud of these very hard nipples. Yeah. He's proud of the nipples. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He's proud of Max. So so oh, 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 so Thank you so much for watching my video essay on It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia.